I would like to thank the evangelical and religious community because I'll tell you what, the support that they've given me, and I'm not sure I totally deserve it, <laughs> has been so amazing. That was Donald Trump last month accepting the Republican nomination for president and thanking evangelical voters for their support. A poll taken earlier this summer by the Pew Research Center found more than three quarters of white evangelicals plan to vote for Trump. But the results also suggest that they may be motivated more by their dislike of Hillary Clinton than their enthusiasm for the Republican nominee. Ralph Reed is the chairman of the Faith and Freedom Coalition. He now joins me from Atlanta. Welcome, Ralph. Good to have you here. Thanks, Paul. Good to be with you. So you know that uh, that since Ronald Reagan, evangelical voters have been a core part of the Republican coalition. How is Donald Trump doing with those voters relative to previous Republican nominees? Well, I think he's hitting at the industry standard, if not heading to really the highest we've ever seen. If you look at the average of the four polls that we've had, uh, you mentioned the Pew poll. There have been three others since then that we consider to have reliable evangelical data. And if you take the average of those, it's about 73% right now for Donald Trump and about 18% for Hillary Clinton. This is critical, Paul, because it's the largest single constituency in the electorate. Uh, it's between 24 and 27% of the electorate. If you add frequently mass attending Catholics, it's another nine or 10%. So this is bigger than the Hispanic vote, bigger than the African American vote, and, and, and bigger than the feminist and gay vote combined. Right. Uh, the highest ever recorded for a presidential nominee was George H.W. Bush's 82% in 1988. 78% uh, was recorded by George W. Bush in 2004 okay. and matched by Mitt Romney. All right. So Donald Trump, not a socially conservative lifestyle, I think it's fair to say, traditionally. So what is, uh, what is resonating with those voters? What issues is he hitting that really, are, really count in this election? I think uh, one thing that he's done, uh, Paul, that is important, and it's, it's sort of obvious, but it gets missed a lot, is he's actually shown up to their audiences and asked for the vote. So that matters. Um, you know, the presence the physical presence of the candidate, a rhetorical appeal, a an argument rhetorically that I share your values and I desire to see your role in society enhance. And I'd say beyond that, his fealty to their positions on the sanctity of life, on traditional marriage, on support for the state of Israel, on religious freedom, particularly that progeny of cases before the Supreme Court, like Hobby Lobby and Little Sisters of the Poor, and finally, his full-throated opposition to the Iran nuclear deal, uh, which I think uh, resonates powerfully in this community because they consider Iran to be an existential threat to the survival of the state of Israel. But it's interesting, Ralph. When I hear, listen to Donald Trump, the, two of the main issues he's stressing are immigration and trade. He doesn't really stress the social issues. That's true that speaking to some of the audiences that you're talking about, he does mention those. But on a day-to-day -day basis, it's trade and immigration that he really hits hard. Is, are those issues that resonate with evangelicals, or, or is this something that they just sort of take for granted and let's go back to their core issues? I think among some it does to the extent that it, it fits into a broader uh, tapestry of him saying that he's going to put America first and he's going to defend American interests. I think that does resonate. But I think if you look at the polling, frankly, Paul, not just among voters of faith, but among all voters, those two issues, trade and immigration, actually rank pretty low right. on the hierarchy of voter concern. That's my point. What's drive, <laughs> yeah, what's driving this election predominantly, even among voters of faith, is the economy, this jobless anemic recovery, uh, a forward-leaning national security posture that helps us combat and defeat Islamic terrorism, 
and, and then you start to get into health care and some others. But th that's the cluster of issues that people are voting on. Okay, so I look at the polls in the, the battleground states and even some of the states that have been won comfortably are Republicans in the past, Georgia for, past, Georgia for example, mm -hmm. uh, Missouri, uh, uh, where evangelical voters are, 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 are a strong part of the population. And yet right. the, election, the, 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 the election right now is a lot closer than you would expect with Hillary Clinton actually competitive. Why? I think in the, I can speak most uh, intelligently about Georgia, but I think this applies to a lot of states. Uh, Georgia has a large African-American vote. It's going to be, I think, 30 percent of the vote. Right. And I think you take that and a Democrat's share of the white vote, and it's going to be competitive. And this is not news. I mean, John McCain uh, barely beat Obama here, again, because of that surge of African-American votes. But, but look, the bottom line is, and this is not exactly a newsflash, Donald Trump has had a rough uh, few weeks, right. and a sinking tide has lowered all boats, so it's made the ballot test a lot closer in places like Texas and Utah and Missouri and Georgia than it shouldn't be. My sense is that they have turned that corner, and I think the polling is going to be a lot uh, better for him, not only in those red states, but nationally and in the battleground states. So the last time you came up to see us, you said that this was a pick 'em race, 50-50. You still stand by that despite the polling? I, I think if Donald Trump continues to stay on message and fix some of the candidate performance issues that he needed to deal with coming out of Cleveland, I, I think this is an extremely competitive race. And I will say this, Paul, I'm not in the prediction business, but based on what we're seeing anecdotally, these voters of faith are going to turn out, and they're going to turn out in huge numbers. And I think he's uh, going to get uh, north of 75 percent of that vote. And if that is baked into the cake, right. there is no way that she runs away with this election. I think it'll be competitive. All right. Thanks, uh, Ralph Reed. Good to see you again. Thanks for coming in. Good to see you, Paul. Still ahead, charges of racism from both campaigns this week as Donald Trump continues his outreach to minority voters. A look at Trump's attack and Clinton's response when we come back. Searching for a great used car? Can you help? Start with the millions for sale at the new Carfax.com. Show me cars with no accidents. <laughs> That's awesome. Plus, you get a free Carfax report. Start your search at Carfax.com.